Greetings, shalom, happy Sabbath to everybody. Welcome back, welcome back. Ready to get back into the word? Praise the Lord, praise the Most High. Amen. Let's go to the book of Genesis, chapter 39, beginning at verse 1, all the way down to verse 23. Genesis, chapter 39. You got your scriptures? All right, let's begin. Verse 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. All right. The scriptures from Genesis to Revelation are written to chosen people, Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes. Moses wrote the first five books of the scriptures called the Torah, which is the law. We're in the book of Genesis, and we're getting into the life of Joseph. His brothers <laughs> conspired against him, threw him in a pit, and they were going to go and get him. At least Reuben was going to get him. <laughs> but when he went back, Joseph wasn't there. The Midianites came along and pulled Joseph out of a pit. And they sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites. And the Ishmaelites sold Joseph into Egypt. So verse 1 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt. And so... The only one of the tribe of Judah, uh, the 12 tribes of Israel uh, that was really sold into Egypt, uh, slavery, was Joseph. The rest of the 12 tribes wasn't really sold into Egypt. I'm bringing this up and bringing it out for a point because the scripture reference back in G Genesis chapter 15 Abraham had a dream, and he dreamed that uh, the Most High was, and uh, it was a vision. And he said, know of a surety that your descendants will be in a land that's not theirs, it will be a stranger in a land that's not theirs, and they will uh, be brought into bondage, and they will serve them 400 years. And then after I will bring them out. But the nation whom they will serve will I judge. So this being, it's like a dual vision. It, it pertains to the Israelites that's going into Egypt now. But it also pertains to the, especially Judah, who's been sold into the land of our enemies, uh, into captivity all over the earth. And so... Uh, the scriptures are being fulfilled uh, from Genesis chapter 1 all the way to Revelation. Everything is done to fulfill scripture and bring the Messiah, uh, Yahweh Shai, back to redeem his people. So that's what you have to always keep in mind. So even us today, we're in Egypt. <laughs> again, the scripture said we will go to Egypt again and ship. That's where we are today. We're in Egypt again. I know that may sound strange to a lot of you who are Hebrew Israelites who have never heard this for the first time. Hebrew Israelites are people who have been sold into captivity from the transatlantic slave trade, especially the, tri the, the southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin called Jews. We are the original biblical Jews of the scriptures, but the world will never... <laughs> at this point in time, recognize us until the Most High comes back. Then they will recognize us. But believe the scripture. That's who we are. We're the biblical Jews. The people over in the land called the nation of Israel, they're not Jews. They're not of the tribe of Judah. They're not of the seed of Abraham. <clears throat> they're Ashkenaz, Khazarians, Japheth, Gentiles. They've taken over that land by fraud and deceit. And since 1948, the world recognized them as God's chosen people. They go by Jewish or Jews. 
But the scripture said they're the synagogue of Satan, that they say that they're Jews, but they do lie. And so those people over in the land are not God's chosen people. That's why you have to read the scriptures in context because people are confused about who the chosen people are. And the scripture plainly shows, it's a theme throughout the scripture, that all of the twelve tribes of Israel are scattered. The northern kingdom of the ten tribes were scattered first. They were no longer referred to as Israel or Ephraim when they were scattered. They became known as Gentiles or Greeks <laughs> or uh, whatever location where they were living. Paul always referenced them as Greeks or Gentiles. People don't understand that and they think he's talking about everybody else in the whole wide world. The scripture is not about everybody else in the whole wide world. It's about the chosen people. So he... Paul always said Jews or Greeks or Jews and Gentiles. It's talking about the two kingdoms. Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel got divided into two kingdoms. The northern kingdom was 10 tribes and the southern kingdom was two tribes. So when Paul make reference to Jews and Greeks or Jews and Gentiles, he's talking about the two kingdoms. So Back in Genesis 39, Joseph is now in Egypt, the land of bondage. That's what Egypt means. And Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites. Ishmaelites are Abraham's firstborn son. Abraham had a son by Hagar. His name was Ishmael. All of the Ishmaelites are the descendants of Ishmael. So these are the people that sold Joseph into slavery, into Egypt, which had brought him down thither. They brought him down and sold him unto Potiphar. Verse 2, And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And so Joseph had a dream <laughs> that... His mother and father and brothers would bow down before him. And this is the fulfillment of that dream. And so Joseph, he was the favorite of his father, Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel. So when the scripture says God loved Jacob but hated Esau, it's the same as saying God loves Israel but hate the Edomites. <laughs> Edom, Edom. Esau's name was changed to Edom. He's the father of the Edomites. But you don't hear people talk about the Edomites. You hear people talk about Israel as if they know who Israel is. <laughs> but Jacob, who is Israel, he loved Joseph. And Joseph was his favorite. So he trained Joseph. Joseph was very smart, very intelligent. <laughs> he always asked Joseph, go see what your brothers are up to. <laughs> He said, oh, they up to no good. <laughs> uh, so some people call Joseph a tattletale. Anyway, but Joseph feared the Lord. Jacob brought him up in the fear and the admonition of the Most High. And so he walked in, in reverence to the Most High. So this is why he's a prosperous man. And uh, the, Lord, the Most High gave him these dreams that his brothers would bow down to him. And so... It seems like everything after he told those his, his brothers, his family, about the dream, everything started going downhill for him, but he still believed that those dreams would come to pass. And so he didn't let all the bad situations phase him. So he was sold, he was thrown in a pit, dug, brought up out of the pit. <laughs> now he's sold into Egypt. But as he is a slave in Egypt, the scripture says he's a prosperous man. Uh, the Lord was with him. The Most High is with him. Yahweh is with him. And it, he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And so he's in servitude. The Egyptians are his master. He don't have any rights. <laughs> Whatever the Egyptian tell him to do, that's what he has to do. Verse 3. And his master saw that the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh, was with him. And that the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh, made all that he did to prosper in his hand. 
And so everything that Joseph did, was he was prosperous. And the people that was his masters, they saw that he was prosperous. The same way it is today. We are the chosen people of the Most High. And that's one of the reasons they came and got us and brought us into captivity. <laughs> Specifically, <laughs> they say uh, this nation, America, was built on the back of slaves. We're the, Egyptian, we're the Israelites, the Jews of the scriptures. We were brought here in bondage. The whole earth is blessed because of us. The scripture even says that uh, the Most High said to Abraham, because of you, through you and your seed, all the earth will be blessed. He's talking about Abraham's seed. We're in all the earth. We're scattered into all the earth. That's why the earth is blessed. That's why this country, America, has prospered so much is because of us, not because America is great. America ain't great. It's us that's making America great. If we wasn't here, this country wouldn't be as great as it is. But <laughs> the world has covered up the greatest secret of all time, the most highest chosen people. And so that's why when he comes, America will be judged harshly for the treatment that they have done unto us. And, and so... As we trust in the Most High, a lot of stuff happened to us when we were brought, when we were brought here in, into captivity. They took away our culture, our heritage, our language, knowledge of who we are, our identity. Uh, our, we couldn't read or write, and so we lost who we were. But deep down uh, in our soul, the Most High was always there. He sent his word to follow us. And now he's waking us up to letting us know who we are. And so this country is blessed because of us. As long as we obey the scriptures from our heart and do what we know to do, we will be like Joseph. And the Most High is watching over us to make sure that happens. He sent forth his word. And as long as we obey his words, his statute, his commandments, his laws, then we will be prosperous even though we're in the land of our captivity. Now, some of us are prosperous, but it ain't the most high that's prospering us. Some of us are being uh, prospered by the, the enemy, the devil. We're worshiping the enemy. Like when Yahweh Shai, Jesus, was in the wilderness, the devil said, if you just bow down and worship me, all this stuff... <laughs> I give you. He said, I'm going to worship the Most High and Him only will I serve. And so uh, some of us have forsaken the Most High and love money. Like the Pharisees, the preachers and pastors back in the time of, of, of Yahweh Shai in the New Testament. The, pre the Pharisees, the scribes, the, the, and the uh, priests, they love money. The same way they do today, these 501c3 corporations, all of them, they just love money. They're lovers of money. And they teach you uh, idol worship. Oh, it's about you. It's your season. <laughs> just bring in your tithe. And so a lot of us are deceived. And, and Yahweh Shai said that would happen. He said a lot of people will come in his name and deceive many. And that's what's happened. Christianity is a form of the name of Christ and has deceived many. Yahweh Shai, Jesus, did not come to start any religion. Judaism, Christianityism, Catholicism, Islam, Buddhism, Hinduism. He didn't come to start any religion. He only came to save his people from their sin. Us, the 12 tribes of Israel that believe the gospel of the kingdom. And that's why he's coming back. But as long as we will believe we will be prosperous. And if we don't believe, we're going to be condemned. If we, That's what the scripture said. And so Joseph, he believed the scriptures. He believed the word of God. He, he obeyed his father. His master saw that the Lord, the Most High, was with him. And the Most High made all that he did to prosper in his hands. So even while we're still in the land of our captivity, the Most High will prosper us. But we're heading into some troubled times, brothers and sisters, and you know what I'm talking about. 
the scripture talks about <coughs> Jacob's troubles, Israel's troubles. These are those days. These are those times. The scripture talks about end times. <coughs> the, the scripture talks about uh, the great tribulation. We're headed into those times. The scriptures talks about the mark of the beast. We're headed into those times. We're in those times right now. Be prepared. <laughs> Obey the scriptures. Obey the word of God. Verse 4. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him and made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put into his hand. So whatever Joseph did, the Most High blessed him. And so the, uh, he became the overseer, and Potiphar's house. Potiphar put him in control over everything. He found grace in Potiphar's sight. And he served him. And Potiphar made him oversee over his house. And all that he had, he put into Joseph's hand. And so that's what will happen. And I, I'm, a, I, I'm a witness to it. Once we obey the scriptures, the word of the Most High, he's going to make sure that we have what we need, even we're, while we're in the land of our captivity. And so Joseph is being blessed. He's being put in charge, even though he's in captivity. Verse 5, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh, blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in his house, in the house, and in the field. And so we can see the prophecy that went forth to Abraham about his seed. That because of him, all the nations of the earth will be blessed. Because of Joseph, in the land of his captivity, Egypt, in, in Potiphar's house, Potiphar is being blessed because of Joseph. In the same way it is today, wherever we're scattered, the whole earth, all the nations of the earth are blessed because we're in the, in, the, in, the, in the land. We're in the land of our captivity. If we wasn't here, they wouldn't be blessed. The Most High is watching over his people. <clears throat> he, he hasn't forsaken us. And so that's what you have to understand. Even though we're in captivity... He, so, he told us, if y'all disobey me, I'm going to scatter you among your enemies. And that's what he did. And so we're in the land of our captivity. He scattered us. But he still loves us. He's chastising us. We just need to get right. <laughs> Obey the scriptures. Verse 6. And he left off, and he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not all he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was goodly a goodly person and well favored and so joseph just you know he was just obeying the lord obeying the scriptures obeying the word from his heart being a doer of the word and not a hearer only and everything he did the most High was blessing him and potiphar didn't worry about a thing everything he didn't know what he had in his house <laughs> only thing he knew was the bread that he did eat so joseph was a good, goodly person and well favored. The Most High blessed him. Now, a lot of these 501c3 corporations, they take these scriptures out of context, and they don't even really talk about the Most High in in, in the context that he's the uh, savior of Israel. That Israel is his people. They they take it all out of context. Oh, it's your season. You're gonna be blessed. Just do this. And they take the scriptures out of context. All these 501c3 corporations, these Sunday churches, that's what they do. Verse 7, And it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast her eyes upon Joseph, and she said, Lie with me. So, again, Joseph just going about his daily routine, doing his business, the work that, you know, he's a slave. He's not taking being a slave to heart. He just, okay, well, this is the situation I'm in. Got to make the best of it. And so that's what he's doing. But his master's wife had other ideas. Part of his own business trip somewhere or something. <laughs> and she's taking a look at Joseph. And you got to understand, Joseph is in a strange land. This is not his land. 
And these people, this is part of their customs and courtesy. They don't fear the most high. So what she doing is normal. <laughs> she like, oh, this guy looks good. <laughs> she cast her eyes upon Joseph. She like, oh, I got to have him. <laughs> what my husband don't know won't hurt him. <laughs> so she said to Joseph, hey, come here. Lie with me. Have sex with me. That's exactly what she's talking about. And she wasn't cutting any corner. She was straight to the point. <laughs> Verse 8. But he refused and said unto his master's wife, Behold, my master would not what is with me in the house. And he hath committed all that he had to my hand. So Joseph, he wasn't floored by what the woman said. He like, no, I can't do that. I'm sorry, but uh, I serve your master and... He put everything in my control. And so, this is, he didn't put you in my control. He didn't tell me I could sleep with you. That's not what he told me I could do. My master would not what he is with me in the house and has committed all that he has into my hand. And so, Joseph is explaining to her, uh, no, this is not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> if I do this, this is going to put me in, in jeopardy, my life in jeopardy. But, you know, <laughs> she ain't having that part of his wife. Verse 9, there is none greater in this house than I. Neither hath he kept back anything from me but thee. Because thou art his wife, how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God, the Most High, Yahweh? And so Joseph explains to her, he said, look, the, your master, my, your husband has put me in great power and authority. <laughs> There's nothing that I can't do except touch you. <laughs> he hasn't put you in my power because you are his wife. And so he said, how can I do this great wickedness against the most high? Yahweh, my God, my, my protector, my provider. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't lay with you as you requested. Verse 10, And it came to pass, as she spake to Joseph day by day, that he hearkened not unto her to lie by her, to do, to be with her. And so Potiphar's wife, they don't give her a name. <laughs> they just call her Potiphar's wife. And so day by day, she just kept on. She like, I'm not going to stop until you lie with me. She is persistent. <laughs> she said, I'm going to wear you down. You think you don't want this, but you're going to want it eventually. And so she just won't stop. Joseph have already told her, look, this is sexual harassment. <laughs> She's like, look, I told you I can't do this. This is not right. This is wickedness before the Most High. I'm not trying to sin against my God, the, the, the Yahweh. I'm not trying to do any evil before him. Verse 11, And it came to pass about this time that Joseph went into the house to do his business, and there was none of the man, men of the house there within. And so Joseph is continuing. We don't know how long this went on day by day, weeks, months. A year. We don't know. Nevertheless, it, it didn't stop. She kept pressuring him and pestering him. Come on, Joseph. <laughs> you know I like you. <laughs> you look good. Don't you like me? Don't you want to kiss me? <laughs> She's doing anything and everything that she can to tempt Joseph. Joseph is just going about his daily business. You know, whatever chores he has to do, making sure everything is run properly in the house. But she's trying to mess all that up. Joseph ain't trying to, to, to go that way, to listen to what she has to say. Verse 12, and she caught him by his garment, saying, Lay with, lie with me. And he left his garment in her hand and fled and, and got him out. And so it got to the point... <coughs> But she was going to force him. And so whatever clothes Joseph had on, uh, a garment, I guess it wasn't tied too tight. 
She caught him by his garment. She pulled it off of him. He, Come here, boy. <laughs> you going to lay with me today. <laughs> and he left his garment in her hand and fled and got him out. He ran. He like, no, no, no. I can't do it. I don't care what you do. I'm not doing it. <laughs> so he probably ran out naked. He like, this woman is crazy. <laughs> I got to get out of here. And so he left. He ran out. Verse 13. And it came to pass when she saw that he had fled, that he had left his garment in her hand and was fled forth. So jo she trying to get Joseph to lay with her. <laughs> she grabbed him by his garment. The garment came off. Joseph is gone. So now she's holding the garment. And so her mind is racing. So how can I use this to my benefit? <laughs> uh, she's scheming and dreaming. Verse 14, and she called unto the men of her house and spake unto them, saying, See, he had brought in a Hebrew unto us to mock us. He came in unto me to lie with me, and I cried with a loud voice. So this is what's happening. She was trying to force J Joseph to lay with her, to lie with her, have sex with her. She pulled off his garment. Joseph fled. And now she got the garment in her hand. And she's telling everybody in her house what happened according to her. <laughs> she said that my husband brought in this Hebrew to mock us. And she's telling everybody the same story. They're keeping it. She ain't deviating from it a bit. He brought in this Hebrew to mock us. He came in unto me. He wanted to try to have sex with me. <laughs> he wanted to lie with me, but I cried out with a loud voice. <laughs> so this is what she's telling everybody in the house. Verse 15. And it came to pass when he heard that I lifted up my voice and cried, and he lifted he left his garment with me and fled and, and got him out. So she continuing with her story. <laughs> Uh, when, when part of her wife, she said, when she lifted up her voice and cried out, you know, screaming, ah! <laughs> he left his garment with her and fled and got him out. So that's her story, is that jo Jacob, Joseph tried to rape her. That's basically what she's saying. He tried to rape me. And so here's his garment to prove it. But I, I screamed. <laughs> and so he didn't go through with it. He ran. He fled. He left. Verse 16. And she left his garment by her until his Lord came home. <laughs> so after she told everybody in the house what happened, <laughs> she's like, okay, I'm going to tell my husband what happened too. <laughs> Because he's probably thinking he's going to wish he had a slept with me. <laughs> so this is her plan. Plan of manipulation. She wanted Jake, jo uh, Joseph to sleep with her. Just have sex with her. Joseph refused. And so now she's saying Joseph tried to rape her. Verse 17. And she spake unto him according to these words. Saying the Hebrew servant which thou hast brought unto us, came in unto me to mock me. And so now she's telling Potiphar the whole story about what happened. You brought in this Hebrew. See, they know who Joseph is. Joseph speak Hebrew. That's the language that we spoke before we was brought into captivity. And so that's what she's saying. He, you brought in to me this Hebrew. He's not a part of us. Which thou hast brought unto us. He came in unto me to mock me. To make fun of me. To abuse me. To take advantage of me. <laughs> so this is what she's saying to her husband Potiphar. She's lying. <laughs> Verse 18. And it came to pass. As I lifted up my voice and cried. And he left his garment with me and fled out. So she's telling part of her the whole story. The same way she told her everybody else in the house. <clears throat> that 
Joseph was trying to rape her. And when she, he was trying to rape her, that's why his clothes is off. And, and he, she screamed, and Joseph ran out. <laughs> that's why she's holding the garment. But Joseph, we know Joseph didn't try to rape her, but that's what she's saying. And so this is how it goes even now today with us, wherever we are. It doesn't matter what we've done. We're in the land of our captivity. So we don't have any rights that the people that's over us have to observe. <laughs> you know that's written somewhere in their, their court documents, their laws. They don't have to observe anything that we say. When a, uh, one of us tried to, to sue them, <laughs> and the court said, no, we, we got to recognize anything that you say. You're a slave. <laughs> We're still in the land of our captivity. We're still basically slaves. We're not really citizens. They, they'll call you that, but technically, according to their laws, bylaws, statutes, and, and, and uh, what they call it, uh, whatever they call it, <laughs> the thing that they, 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 they have, that they, the Constitution, it doesn't apply to us. It only applies to the people that owns this country. We don't own this country. We're still servants. <laughs> and so all their laws doesn't really apply to us. Even good, bad, or indifferent. But they make the ones that apply to us to put us in jail. They, they apply. But to give us freedom? No, nah, nothing else applies to us. So they can do whatever, say whatever, and get away with it. That's why they get away with it. Because <laughs> We don't have any protection other than the Most High. And because we're in the land of our captivity, we're going to be treated harshly. The Most High already warned us. He told, uh, warned uh, Abraham, said, they're going to treat them with cruelty, your people. They're going to be in the land of their enemies, the, uh, a, a strange land, and they're going to be cr treated bad. And that's what's happening even now, even until this day, the same thing. It's still happening. It hasn't changed. That's why we are who we are. The scriptures has, is telling us who we are. All we got to do is read it and believe it. Verse 19, And it came to pass, when his master heard the words of his wife, which she spake unto him, saying, After this manner did thy servant to me, that his wrath was kindled. And so after... Potiphar's wife explained everything to him. Uh, he he didn't think nothing else about it. He like, okay, fine, I got this. You ain't got to worry about nothing. He believed every word that came out of her mouth. Joseph don't even have a case. It's already been solved, according to them. Joseph is guilty, and he's going to jail. <laughs> It says his wrath was kindled. Uh, kindled against who? Against Joseph. That's who his wrath is kindled against. And so this is how it is. Then and now. All somebody got to do is say, I was afraid for my life. <laughs> that's why I shot them. Oh, the court's like, oh, okay. That's, that's all right then. Yeah, we, we. That's how it is. When you're in the land of your captivity, you don't have any rights. You don't have any privileges. Verse 30, verse 20, And Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison and placed a place where the king's prisoners were, and he was there in the prison. And so Potiphar took Joseph and just took him straight to jail, straight to prison. Don't pass go, don't collect $200, go straight to jail. And so Joseph is now in prison, and he didn't do anything. He didn't commit any crime, but that's just how the system works. It works against us. It's the mark of the beast system. The mark <laughs> marks you for death. And so everybody else in the world is marked for death. That's what the mark is. It's not us. It's them that's marked for death. But the beast is the government system. Those, the, their government, whoever's in rulership is the beast. 
And so this pertains to what's happening right now in our world. <laughs> the mark of the beast system. This thing that they calling a pandemic. <laughs> this is the mark. They want everybody to receive something so that they can mark you. <laughs> If you receive this mark, then you're marked for death. This mark is the mark of the beast, the, the ruling people. And so the ruling people are going to be destroyed. And the Most High, Yahweh, has warned us, do not, under any circumstance, receive this mark. If you receive this mark, you're going to be destroyed along with everybody else that's marked for death. And this is specifically to warn Hebrew Israelites of the seed of Abraham, all 12 tribes of Israel. And so Joseph took, I mean, uh, Potiphar took Joseph and he throwed him into prison. And this prison is where the king kept all his prisoners. And so Joseph is in there, in there with all the other prisoners. Verse 21. But the Lord, the Most High, Yahweh, was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And so here goes something else bad happening to Joseph again. <laughs> he didn't do anything. Even when he was thrown in the pit, he didn't do anything. Well, he just told everybody, look, I had a dream. Y'all going to fall down and, and worship me. <laughs> and ever since he told that dream, a lot of bad stuff been happening. But he believed what that, that vision, what that dream said. So he's not letting all these bad things happen. He's like, well, I guess this has to happen. <laughs> and so he's now in prison. But as long as he's serving the most high, keep obeying his word, doing what he told to do to the best of his ability, the Most High is with him. The, the Most High was with Joseph, Yahweh, and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prisoner. So even in prison, Joseph is blessed. Verse 22, And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. And so everything that Joseph put his hand to do is being blessed. That's what the Most High has told us to do. If y'all obey my words, my statutes, commandments, everything that y'all do, y'all will be blessed. But if you don't, oh, there's consequences and repercussions. Now, J Joseph didn't do anything to deserve all the stuff that he's going through, except tell his vision. But that's why you got to understand the scriptures and the context of the scripture. All this is happening according to prophecy. We have to end up in Egypt. <laughs> and so everything is happening has to go the way that it's happening. Even though Joseph didn't do anything to deserve the treatment that he's in. But he's obeying the scriptures. He's obeying the voice of the Most High. And so whatever they did there, he was the doer of it. Joseph was in charge, in control, and controlling everything that's going on in the prison. Because he obeyed the voice of the Most High, Yahweh. Verse 23. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand. Because the Lord was with him, the Most High, Yahweh, and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. And so everything that Joseph put his hand to prospered because he obeyed the commandments of the Most High. Even though they're not written, they're written in his heart. <laughs> his, his father brought him up in the fear and admonition of the Most High. To train up a child in the way that he should go when he gets older. He will not depart. And so Joseph obeyed the scriptures in his heart. He obeyed the word of God, the commandments in his heart. And so whatever he did, he was blessed. Even though he was thrown into prison and he hadn't committed any crime. He hadn't broke any laws. But he was lied to. He was framed. And so now this is where he finds himself. 
But even there, the Most High is still watching over him. And so this is what we have to do. No matter where we are, what situation we may find ourselves in, obey the scriptures, obey the commandments, obey the voice of the Most High, obey his laws and statutes, and, and serve him with uh, humbleness of heart. Don't be trying to be all haughty or, you know, prideful of anything. Just stay humble. <laughs> and the Most High will bless you and watch over you and keep you, even in these troubling times, because it's going to get rough. It's going to get hard. And we got to keep our faith, our trust, our confidence in the Word, in the Most High, Yahweh, and Yahweh Shah, the Savior of Israel. Thank you for listening. See you next time. Shalom.